horse. Ladies and gentlemen, is on a horse. All right, so this will be fun. Kyle's I'm sorry, to to I'm sorry to make you wait. You're a luchador, really? <laughs> I'm in disguise. We, we, we just stopped asking at this point. <laughs> so, uh, have you guys already described what this is? We haven't done that. We've been sitting here just, just like posing. Like we've been like, like having little yaoi moments. Nothing about that. Or as we all on Saturday night. <laughs> Yeah. That's nice. Welcome to Single and Tundra Theatre. So just real quick, this is another part of the Happy New Year here at AOA. It's the year of the rabbit, 2011. One of the traditional things at New Year in Japan is doing nothing but watching TV and listening to old radio shows and listening to the radio. So this is absolutely great. And we thank Kyle for taking the time out for doing this production all in Japanese. Uh, <laughs> He didn't get it. Yay, I'm alive. So, uh, I now turn this back over to your host, Mr. Christ. Thank you. Do not make eye contact with Kyle. It's an unstartled and big bald beast. <laughs> Alright, so. Why are there little purple spots on his right now? So. <laughs> It's like a one-up from Mario. <laughs> so, uh, what we have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is an old-time radio script. We do this around the country, and we take actual scripts and let the actors do it. I don't know what we're going to do. So, we have too many people in too few parts. It is like anime. <laughs> it's like anime, yes. You want to bow out, really? What? Why, are you, why are you bowing out? Okay. So, even without me, Sarah, do we still don't have enough parts? I don't know. Because I'm not going to perform. <laughs> I'm going to do sound effects. I'll do sound effects. But, uh, yeah. Kyle, what if you did, like, uh, a, a, a cast for the first half and a cast for the second half, maybe? I don't know. Why don't you just, like, that sounds like I can audition you and crush your hopes. That would be fun. <laughs> Please. I didn't recognize you, Chris. Yeah, we'll read every word and pass the script out the entire We can do that. We can do that. This is the fun of improvisation. So we're going to cast people in various roles. They haven't seen the script before. No. They haven't read it. They're going to. Yeah. We'll help Patrick since he can't read. But yeah, what we're going to do is just what's called a cold read. No one's rehearsed it or anything. Everyone has the option to stick to the script if they want, and believe me, it's funny as it is. Or they can choose to attempt to make it funnier by improvising. <laughs> Are we allowed to do a certain beast for your impression? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever. An actor's discretion. You can do accents if you want. Okay. You can do dialects. You can do whatever. You can totally go against whatever the dialogue says, and that makes it more fun, quite honestly. Uh, false. 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 Right, right. All right, we're so um, we're gonna hand off a script here for uh, the host who starts the show. He only has one, uh, not the, well, NBC announcer. This was on NBC. We're doing a sci fi script from 1950 called Dimension X. There's lots of futuristic stuff in here, some of which has actually come true. Ooh, ah. Just like Southland Tales. That's crazy. I know, right? That was a joke for four people there, I know. <laughs> okay, we to speak of Southland we're going to make some NBC announcer. Um, yeah, you have one line. 
That's the other downside. Not all of these have a lot of lines. 50% more than I usually get. Right. Yeah, so, uh, come on, come on. People stop texting me so I can do what I need to do here. You're late. You're late. I know I'm late. I know I'm late. <laughs> KG Tang, you're a bartender. Always having to say you're sorry. Yeah. It's been a long night. <laughs> Spike, you are still a long night. God, this is Saturday has not ended. I'm in Groundhog's Day. Robert Axelrod, you're drunk. <laughs> He hasn't had anything before this, right? And then drunk. John Allen, you are Buddy, who has a whole two lines. But you are going to make awesome comedy out of these two lines, I'm sure. <laughs> I know. That's why you're going to improvise and make them better. You will, you will. Mr. Talison Jaffe, you will be logic. Logic is like a robot. There's so much irony in that. I'm trying to tell you something. Last year, she was a 10-year-old boy who liked popsicles. <laughs> this year, you're gonna wanna throw her through a wall. <laughs> uh, Christopher Smith, we're going to give him the main part of Frank. I know, right? Where's Mr. Miller? Did he not make it today? Oh. No, he... Boo on that. I, I think we may have broken him last night. <laughs> it's, it's a part. Okay, well... Promises were made, uh, the things happened. I'm, I think I actually broke him last night. I'm really, really sorry. You broke him at, what, Rocky Horror or something? Or? At Rocky Horror, I think I broke Matt Mercer. There was... Does anybody, <laughs> does anybody know what Green Death is? <laughs> he now has it, so... <laughs> Wow, sorry. There's an awful lot of Everclear in it, that's all I'll say. That's wasn't, nice. wasn't Steve Weiss put for this too? I may have killed Matt Mercer. Did you leave him a kidney this time? Weiss? Well, you know, a kidney. half a kidney. And I took his pretty, pretty hair. Uh, Patrick Seitz, you're a boss. Space Lee Sprockets, boss. I guess he could fly into the sun. Well, those commie bastards. I know, live effects, right? Okay, now, who doesn't have a part yet? Does everyone have a part? Actually, you do. You ladies have parts. There's just not a lot to it, and I, I know. Who's who? Who's on first? Take your pick. Yeah, you're Gert, Lauren. We're gonna get there. 
We're almost done. We only have three rolls left. Maybe I can be someone after all. I can be someone after all. John, you only have two lines, so let me give you Mike as well. You be Mike. I will be uh, Korlanovich. What? <laughs> I'm your I'm your daddy in the script. He's a spineless fool. I know, right? Okay. You're also going to be the sergeant. 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 Okay. All right. And then I'm Korolanovich. That's me. And uh, I think that's everybody. Woo. So are we ready to play radio? Excellent. Um, I will be someone after all. I guess we didn't find a host. I guess I'll be a host. Because it's just fun and narrating. But anyway, let's turn back the wave, the, the, the wave back machine or something. And pretend there's no internet. There's no nothing. Pretend that NBC hired this group of guys and gals. And actually let us loose. In, this, in a padded room that's not the sanitarium. Fair enough? Fair enough. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, Dimension X. This is called A Logic Named Joe from July 1st, 1950. We delay the start of this program to bring you a special bulletin from NBC Newsroom in New York. Truckloads of U.S. fighting men are rolling in north from Daejeon, Korea to enforce South Korea's battered army, which still holds Suwon and its vital airstrip. The first American crew troops flown in from Japan they're now approaching the combat zone. Meanwhile, the North Korean communist supports and the American planes have bombed their capital pay on three times a day. Keep tuned to your NBC station for the news later at the later news. NBC News Guy, aren't you Japanese? Yeah, <laughs> Excellent. Adventures in time and space told in future tense. Dimension X! To all our listeners, a brief forward before tonight's adventure in the world of the future. Beginning next week, Dimension X moves to a new time on Friday evenings instead of Saturdays. In the Eastern Time Zone, it'll be heard at 9 o'clock, Fridays. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Everybody got that? Good. In other zones, please consult your local newspapers to learn, oh, who reads the friggin' newspaper anymore? Really? My cat uses that as a litter box. Anyway. <laughs> now, tonight's venture into the world of tomorrow, a most unusual about a logic named Joe and a man named Frank and about and how he and how he saved civilization. It was on the third day of August that Joe came off the assembly line. On the fourth, Lorraine came into town, and that afternoon, I saved civilization. Lorraine's a blonde I was crazy about once, and Joe, he's a new 1974 model logic that I got stored away down in the cellar. <laughs> and just how do I save civilization? I save it by keeping Joe down in the cellar. <laughs> Sometimes I think about turning Joe on. <laughs> Sometimes I think about turning Joe on, letting him make a million for me. You are 
listening now to a voice from the future. Oocher, oocher, oocher. Scary, huh? I know, right? The voice of Frank Caldwell, head serviceman for the Logix Corporation, makers of the machine that does everything for you. Everything. <laughs> well, nearly everything. <laughs> but only down in the cellar. That's right. They also made real dolls. Anyway, in the year we speak of, 1974, the electronic logic sets were working so well that life was soft indeed for repairman Frank Caldwell, you know. That is, until that fatal day of August the 3rd, when suddenly the logics began doing everything for their users. Everything. Everything. <laughs> well, almost everything. <laughs> For the users of Tron. Anyway. <laughs> everyone noticed that the Tron legacy theme sounds like Young and the Restless? It does. Look it up. Anyway. <clears throat> back to the show. <laughs> Hi, boss. What's the matter? Somebody put you through a ringer? <laughs> oh, Frank, uh, you're busy right now. Nah, there haven't been any service calls all day. Fine, uh, there's a customer outside. Go take care of him, will ya? Me? No way, I'm a maintenance man. I know. There's no salesman around this man. This guy wants to have our machines explained to him. Explained? Yeah. Everybody in the world knows about logics. Where's he been? On Mars? Uh, just moved over the backwoods someplace. Well, why don't you explain him? I... I don't, I don't feel too well. Yeah, you look like crap, too. <laughs> Yeah? You were okay just about an hour and a half ago. Look, you're the boss here, or am I? Don't answer me. Go on out there, will ya? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Good morning. My name's Caldwell. How can I help you? Uh, thank you, Mr. Caldwell. My name's Korlovovich. <laughs> this is... Yes, I'm Russian. What about <laughs> This is my little boy, Freddy. <laughs> nice Russian name, Fred. <laughs> I am Freddy. I'm not Russian, though. I'm adopted. <laughs> oh, Freddy, what's with that mouth, huh? I hate oh. you. <laughs> I got you, didn't I? <laughs> Dad, that was my line. That's, uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, Freddy. <laughs> That's yeah. a fine kid you got there. You know what I'm saying? No. I heard about you. You do things to machines and sellers. I'm not into that. I'm ten. I didn't know Pedal Bear existed in 1950. Freddy, how many times I tell you not to kick people in the shins? <laughs> Excuse him, please, Mr. Caldwell. He's an idiot. Stick it. I, I got a knife at home and I can cut you into pieces. <laughs> That's the real line. <laughs> Freddy! We'd like to buy a logic, Mr. Caldwell. The gentleman we spoke to first said he had to leave in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Grew up all over the <laughs> Too bad he missed Freddy. Oh, he did, did he? Huh? Well, I understand you're not acquainted with logics, Mr. Kodalanovich. <laughs> Excuse you, you went to Taco Bell, yes? <laughs> yes, that's right, we just moved to city. My wife, oh, she saw that everybody else had a logic and, well, you know how women are. Oh, you bet, you bet. <laughs> Well, you can't get along without a logic in this day and age, Mr. Korlanovich. Look, I got a snake. You want to see it? Ah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> uh, Look, man, it just that's where I keep it, okay? Come on. <laughs> Will you shut up, kid? Uh, yeah. Now, <clears throat> about the logic. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll plug one in here. There now, you see? The logic looks kind of like an old-fashioned television set. Only it's got keys instead of dials. Ooh, 
futuristic. Ooh, that is nice. Now, let's say you want to talk to a friend. If you have any friends. I, I have no friends. I live alone. Well, you, I mean, I have friends, but yeah, that doesn't count. That's why you don't have any friends. You just punch the number of his logic. Okay. Like making an old-fashioned phone call. <laughs> Except you not only hear him, but ooh, you see him too. How about that on this viewing screen here? Now, of course, that's not the important feature of these things. Well, is there an app for that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow you, what? iPhone. Oh. But... This is 1974, Dad. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give it the retro times. Okay. Pong is my favorite video game. I've got it in wooden ready. Now, uh, suppose you want to ask a question. You're a genius! I have questions! <laughs> like, uh, what's it take for a sore throat? Or who won the American League pennant in 1911? Because lots of people give a shit about that. <laughs> just, I know. just turn on the logic. Click. <laughs> Don't the futuristic sound it makes. <laughs> Like this, because you don't know how to ask a question. <laughs> Who was the first president of the United States? Beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop beep boop. Beep. George Washington. Thank you for asking, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> you see? I already knew that. Well, hey, I mean, come on, that's just a sample. <laughs> well, well, I got a little store. Will it keep books for me? Yeah? Oh, it'll keep your books, record your contacts, serve as a filing system, and check up on what happened to your lawyer's last client. <laughs> <coughs> Anything? Say, there really is something these things, that. 10,000 services and information sources in one. Read our advertising. I can't read. I'm like Patrick, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, group hug. Oh no! <laughs> He's hurling on me. What is this, <laughs> up <for> net? <laughs> and hurling's not a real sport yet. Well, what I want to know, Mr. Caldwell, how do these logic work? You saw that big building across the street? Ah. Well, that's one of the relay tanks. Now, there are dozens of them around the country all hooked up together. What a novel idea. And there's a data plate in one of those tanks for every fact in creation. You mean those relays know everything? Probably. <laughs> Waits for page turn. Everything? Let me tell you, if there's something they don't know, the technicians are busy making a relay plate for it right now. The logic integrates the facts in the tank and gives you the answers. Hey! Hey! Can I ask this thing how to make dart poison? I am I not surprised. <laughs> how to make what? Oh, I think this is... Dart poison, like in Africa! I can shoot the darts from my pea shooter! <laughs> The logic won't tell you about the logic won't tell you about no dark poison. See? Well, I love this. I'm gonna try it. Beep boop. Hey, how do you make dark poison? Public policy forbids this service unless you are over 18 and willing to click here. <laughs> I want to see, Dad. 
Not <laughs> quite everything. Not quite everything. Sorry. What did you do that for? On account of some little shit brat. Uh, on account of some children might ask dumbass questions like that, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I don't like this one. How about that one over there? They're all alike, yeah. Well, your face is alike. <laughs> I want that one. If I can't have that one, I'm gonna hold my breath until I'm dead. All right, Thomas. Yes. One, two, three. You're not turning blue. I have a knife and I can cut you. What, with your pea shooter? Trousers thing? It spits. Oh! I don't like this future! Oh! Fine. <laughs> Go ahead, Frank. What? Oh. The kid is so much alike, even I can't tell him apart. I can, and I want Joe! Joe? Who's Joe? Your mom. Uh, uh, your mom. I mean, Joe Mama. Yeah. I, I, that's it. Uh, I guess he needs the lodging, Mr. Caldwell. He has to think of a name to call everything. You should hear the names he calls me. Asshole. Douchebag. I think I just did it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, not till I'm 21. I promised mother. My real mother. The one who cares about me. The one who bought me a pony! <laughs> and the plastic rocket. <laughs> Alright, so we call him Joe. But what makes you think Joe's any different from the rest? He looks different somehow. <laughs> oh, be silly. Those things are all alike. At one ten thousandth of an inch, like your pea shooter. <laughs> Scene change. Oh. And now there's a card game in progress. So anyway, so he keeps yelling. Joe, I don't have any dark poison. Joe, I don't have any dark poison. I want that one. I want that one. I'm going to call him Joe. Why did you run his neck? Ah, Jesus Christ. I could have run his neck, I tell you. <laughs> Mike, I was talking to you. Mike? Oh, oh you fell asleep again. <laughs> uh, how many cards, Charlie? Hey, give me two. Oh boy, what a holy terror. Yeah, he had his father scared to death. Ah, oh, too bad that kid ain't mine. I'm gonna show him quick enough who's boss in the family. What's the matter, Mike? Uh, sorry, fellas. Gotta hold up the hand a minute. Okay. I just remembered. Gotta call my wife. Oh, that's a weird topic. Do you have not met my wife? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Total. Don't let her see the card game, or she'll be down here with a hat. <laughs> you telling me what? <laughs> David Reference in 1974. Yeah. Type thing, type type, type. Hey, what's the matter with this thing? Can I get in my house? <laughs> Announcing new and improved logic service. Your logic is now equipped not only to give consultive, but directive advice. If you want to do something and don't know how to do it, ask your logic. Have a nice day, right? Ooh, uh, yeah, isn't that special? Hey, well, what you know about that? Eh, it's just somebody trying to pull a gag and did he do what he do? C. Didn't sound like a gag to me. <laughs> Maybe the boss decided to add a new logic service? No, 
the boss knows better than to start anything like that. Why, look, the minute the system starts giving advice, some joker like you's gonna be asking questions like, how can I get rid of my wife? Why are you? Yeah. <laughs> but, but you heard what the logic just said. Nah, the sensor circuits will block the question. You don't believe me? Go on and try it. <laughs> okay, anything for a laugh? See. <laughs> try it, try it. I did it. Thanks for inviting the Lucky Charms guy to our party. <laughs> okay, Logic, I've got a question for you. How do I get rid of my wife and make it look like an accident? So this question, is your wife blonde or brunette? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> She's a blonde. <laughs> Hexachromamontine is a constituent of green soup polish. Take home a frozen meal containing pea soup. Color the soup with green soup polish. This poison is fatal to blonde females only. You can try this at home. <laughs> this stack has not been brought out of human experiment, but is a product of logic service. You cannot be convicted of murder. It is improbable that you will even oh be suspected. Who's the least? There is a god. I'm finally gonna be free. <gasps> Googly eyed zombie breakdance of Jesus. <laughs> Did he do? Said that better myself. It's bad to be right. These things can make a mistake. Ah, uh, well, Mike, don't stand there. Turn that thing off and check the sensor circuits quick. <coughs> we can't get to them. They're, ah, they're all sealed up. It's supposed to be impossible for them to go out of order. Well, they're out of order now, and I got a feeling some awful things are gonna happen. Boss, we gotta do something. The logics have gone nuts. Ah, relax. Then give a goofy answer once. Maybe it was a joke. Who ever heard of a logic making a joke? Well, it was an accident. Forget it. Won't happen again. What makes you so sure? People are going to be trying it. Now look, supposing I want to get rid of you, for instance. <laughs> Funny guy. You don't. How would you collect your pay? Yeah, but supposing. Now I'm going to try it and see what the logic says. <laughs> If you want to do something and don't know how, ask your logic. So, how do I <clears throat> bump off my butt? So <coughs> do <laughs> Male, bald headed, 45. <laughs> <laughs> Is he fat or thin? Be careful how you answer. Holy mackerel! Oh, he's uh, trim, svelte, and sexy. <laughs> Don't mind telling you, I'm completely heterosexual, but if I wasn't. <laughs> or he's fat. Don't piss off the director, that nothing good comes of that. <laughs> this is how the machines work back then. <laughs> Make some chocolate ice cream containing powdered charcoal in place of half the chocolate. Use hot so brand charcoal. Hot so contains an ingredient fatal only to fat, bald headed males. This stack is a product of Kyle Labor. Oh, hold on. Huh? This stack is a product of Logic Services. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, did you hear what it said? This keeps up. We'll have to shut down the company. Can you? We can't shut down the company, and you know it. Logic's to all the computing, bookkeeping, filing, and recording of contracts. For every business in the country. And all the television programs, personal calls, weather forecasts, employment notices. I know that. But... Ah, wake up! 
we shut down the logics, we go back to a civilization we've forgotten how to run. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, boss, they're now giving out information on Moiner. And no telling what else. Eh, yeah, we'll just have to find out why to fix it. Meantime, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing to worry about. Of course not! Hmm. You ask those questions for a gag, right? Nobody's gonna ask him a serious like. What you need is a little more faith in human nature. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's probably old volunteer. Person to person video call. Go ahead! Cyrus, dear? How do you feel? Ah, <laughs> ah just fine, sweetheart. Fine. Ah. I just called to tell you, Cyrus. I want you to be sure to get home on time for dinner. Yeah? Why? Because I've got a special surprise for you, dear. Your favorite dessert. Dessert? We was just talking about dessert. What kind? Homemade chocolate ice cream. The flavor is heavenly, Cyrus. When you taste it, you'll just die. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream, huh? Uh, this, this can't be happening. Agnes wouldn't... Uh, oh, yeah, well, God, I gosh, would. Have oh, this a, is dangerous. Have a little faith in human nature, huh? Caldwell, you're the head of the maintenance crew. Yeah. I'll give you 24, eight, it's a day. 24 hours to fix these logics, or you're fired, Ooh. and I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, boss, I don't know. If Please, give me an extra maintenance crew, give me a doctor. You! Me? Yeah, get moving. Where? Anywhere! Find out what the logics are up to, and see that you do before I eat some ice cream. <laughs> Bartender? Hey! Bartender, give me a double. You want some more? <laughs> you want some more? <laughs> I, I, I think I do in a second. Uh, I'm still thinking. <laughs> I don't know. Got any little umbrellas? What's the matter, pal? You had a bad day? All right, go away, will you? Oh, listen, pal. You gotta listen. I got, I got, I got trouble. Hey, bartender, <laughs> get this bar fly off me, will you? For Pete's sake, I'm tired. <laughs> now don't say that. I got troubles. I got lumbago and arthritis and uh, all cars from the seventies. And uh, I'm not getting invited to Asia this year. <laughs> How am I gonna keep my wife from finding out I had a couple of little little, little, little drinks? How am I gonna do that, huh? Look, Mister, it's, it's a hot day. I've been driving around my brand new 1974 Chevy Monza. <laughs> All right, see, so yeah, yeah, get away from me. Yeah. I've been trying to keep a bank president from having apoplexy on account of his logic told him how to rob his own bank. I've been tripping over dead bodies so artistically croaked that nobody's ever gonna find out who done it. And all you've got on your mind is... How am I gonna keep my wife from finding out I had a couple of Exasperated sigh. How? <laughs> Go ask a logic or something. A logic? My pal! What a wonderful idea! Where's the logic? Hey, 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 hey. Look right behind you, and here's a nickel. Got any more? <laughs> <laughs> you can't get nothing for a nickel nowadays. <laughs> Oh, give me a nickel, give me a nickel. Gotta put it in the logic. You want to... Oh, God, sorry about that. I wasn't a bad picture at all. Oh, I can't believe you've been talking to this real doll this entire time. Anyway, this I gotta hear. This is gonna be good. Clink, clink.
Now come on, logical. Palo, 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 palo line. Be nice. Ping, ping, ping. R. How does a guy keep his wife from finding out he's had a couple of little, 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 little drinks? Answer me that. How? Huh? Buy a bottle of Frandine hair shampoo. It is harmless, but contains an ingredient which instantly neutralizes alcohol. One teaspoon for each jigger you've consumed. Well, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say, right? <laughs> oh, boy, I gotta buy a bottle of Southern Comfort. No, a bottle of... Funny, 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 funny. I gotta buy a bottle of... For... Huh. Supposing it's right, you'll never remember it as far as the drugstore. I think there's a bottle in the crapper. Somebody left it in there. Along with something else, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, my pal! No more trouble! I'm saying it's poop. Show me how to get home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I have a You know, I got a picture of him in the bag drinking shampoo. It's because you couldn't get any real poo. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually... Hey! No, <clears throat> what? That <clears throat> stuff on your poo there. Sorry. <laughs> hey, give me another double while you're at it, beer tender. There's poop everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's worse. It'll be as low as you or as high as him. Drinking poo. Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell are you? Uh, he's my husband, but uh, I kind of know he's oh, here. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but okay. Just How you sure. doing? So nice. Now there's just poop everywhere. <laughs> Your husband's well, singing. I had a drink about an hour ago. <laughs> my head. That no good schmageggy. I'll show him. He thinks he can come stagger and stagger home again and drinking shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go teach him or sing with him or something. Call me. <laughs> oh, oh, my dear. Oh, what a surprise to see you. Archibald? Yes, Archibald. <laughs> yes, my love. What are you doing? <laughs> Are you drunk? Drunk? Sober? Well, of course, my love. I'm as sober as a judge. Then what are you doing in the bathroom? <laughs> well, I was merely conducting a little search of the stalls, my dear. Without any pants on? That's how you usually do it. <laughs> Your suspicions wound me deeply, my dear, my love. Let me tell you, my dear, that I've been conducting a research project that is going to make us a fortune. Listen, I've been counting the number of pubic hairs <laughs> that are left on the bone. The drink that makes us, makes happy homes. Scratchy throats. Scratchy throats. And now a totally different
favorite scene? <laughs> the transition music, please. I'm Caldwell from the Logix Company. Sergeant, I just stopped in to see. Logix Company? Mmm, yes, we're Caldwell. <laughs> you people have earlier last time I saw you. control, we'll have you all behind bars. <laughs> no. Now look, Sergeant, say... No, oh, no, sir, the you look. His wife is blank. Greatest crime wave in history, and we can't even make an arrest. They're all perfect crimes. Mm -hmm. Well, we are doing our best to find out exactly... It's not good enough, Paul. Mm -hmm. If you can't find out anything, shut down the company. Or the police department will. We know there's some big gang in back of this. Maybe you know something about it, Caldwell. You're, you're very strange. <laughs> you're very strange. Hey, hold this. Oh. Everybody but Frank, keep a shirt on. Now look, there's nobody back in it, see? The logics run themselves. They pick their own circuits automatically, which they shouldn't do. Mm, get you mean they're doing this all by themselves? Sure. We always thought they could do more things than we knew about. Oh, sure. <laughs> I think they're just trying to be <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> Well, you better make them cut out the tricks, boy. Including this new one. This is what this is they're up to now. What, what new business is that? Oh, we just started about an hour ago. Every time you turn on the logic, mm -hmm. he asks you your name and then spells out the whole history of your life. Uh-oh. I'm screwed. Well, I, I, I hadn't heard about that. What's it do that for? You tell me, sonny. Go on, try. Mm -hmm. Okay. your name? Hey, how do you like that? He's polite and everything. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm Frank Caldwell. Frank Cod Caldwell, huh? Were you ever called Ducky? Did we go to high school together? I, I don't know. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I, I was experimenting. There was a war on. I needed the money. <laughs> Ooh, did you say Ducky? Hey, lay off. Ducky, there is a video call for you. Oh, hi, Duck and Walk and Sugar Pants. Holy sh cats. <laughs> what in the name of sweet zombie googly eyed bread dancing Jesus is there? <laughs> that you odd little person is Lorraine. Uh, since 
I saw you last. I heard you got uh, married. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's right, Ducky. You won't believe me, I know, but I've had four husbands. <laughs> I've been busy. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I don't have a husband right now, so I'm free. But I've never loved anybody as much as I love you. You've, uh, you've divorced? Uh -huh. Well, wait a second. No, that, that, no, no, wait. One, two, three, three. The last one died unexpectedly. Jonathan Jehoshaphat. How unexpected that must have been. Well, you know, I, I, I plant no way. Um, who expected it? Who unexpected it? Who unexpected it? Who unexpected it? it? Well, well, he did. But the jury acquitted me, Ducky. I didn't do anything. They knew it was just a little old accident. I mean, I didn't, um, what? No, wait. So now I'm free again, and we just got lots of things to talk over, like... Lorene. What? Says that, I don't know. Yeah, well, are you going to say I anything else? I don't think you Well, oh, oh. I was okay. uncomfortable. Well. I needed to stop you on your mother <laughs> You come right over here, Ducky, instantly, and I got a well, present for you. I, 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 oh. I, I got a few more eyes, hold on. I, 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 <laughs> thank you, Logic, I'm working and stuff. Oh, uh, I've, got, I've got all this shampoo to deal with, so I'll, I'll call you back. What do you, what do you say? I've got something that you can shampoo. <laughs>
you gotta put more men on the job or something. We gotta lick these logics. <laughs> no, really, it says that. Or maybe not. See, my wife's gonna leave me if we don't. Hey, you're also gonna be looking for a job if we don't. What kind of job? Uh, you listen, you. The logics are giving out information. I don't care about the job, but listen. They're giving out information yeah. on high explosives, to fine points of murder, and legal loopholes that will be any charge from hijacking to high treason. Yeah, but my wife. Hey! And about six guys have thought of asking how to switch bank rates so they can corner all the cash in the country. Quit bothering me. Get over to the tank and help Mike try to, try to block off some of them certain. Oh, I can't even budge any of these relay plates. Yeah, me neither. Start banging them. Banging. I don't know. We were, oh, we were banging before. Now we've we stopped banging. banging. Stop. Apparently it says banging stops. So, okay. uh, Isn't there any way we can, you know, disconnect them? Wow. There is. No. Connected. <laughs> That's how little logics are made. <laughs> oh no, Mike! What are we gonna do? Well, I think about splitting my throat. Um, that sounds like an actual That's line. Party. <laughs> when, when they were giving out all the information on everybody, my wife got the lowdown on a certain blonde. I've got nothing left to lose for. Blonde? God, Zeus, why did you have to remind me? Oh, you got one? Oh, well, doesn't everyone. My only hope is I. Ain't got her, you know what I mean? Cause God knows I don't. <laughs> hey, see who that's for? I think it's Lorraine. Oh, it's my turn to talk in the microphone. <laughs> Hi, Dougie darling. Oh, Lorraine, not again. Yeah. <laughs> Dougie darling, I'm lonesome. Why haven't you come over? Uh, well, I, 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 Attention to assistant 
solving a special problem of logic service, kindly give the following information if possible. Where does Frank Cadwell live? Oh shit. You got it. <laughs> well, that does it. I'm through. So look, Kurt, uh, there is no plot. Frank Cadwell, really. I told you I was leaving you. Yeah. <laughs> promises. Promises. Leave me later, will you? Right now, pack yourself up and the kids, okay? We gotta get out of here. What is all this? Are the cops after you or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's the cops. Come on, get away, will you? Hey, hey, get away from that logic. Yeah, but don't you think we ought to hear the police calls? Uh, 27 called. Oh, no. Details to round up all employees of the Lodges Company. Use caution. They're suspected of sedition. Kidnapping, money laundering, Holy crap, pay no attention to that irritating little boy. Holy smoke, the cops are after me. But you just said they weren't. Car 17, car 17, proceed to vicinity of 119 East 7th Street, child terrorizing neighborhood. Mm. <laughs> Use extreme caution, child is on with a pea shooter. <laughs> Don't worry, he won't cause any trouble with that little thing. Go oh, on, Freddy! My eye! Who's Freddy? Uh, Freddy's a mean little kid. See, he wanted a logic that would tell him how to make duck poison. They're all alike, these little kids. I kept telling him they're all alike. Oh, I guess it's the computer. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go. I don't know. All I know is it was a nice world up till yesterday. Now it's like a guy named Joe come along and squashed all our mud pies for us. That's another euphemism. <laughs> Looks to me like it was a logic named Joe. A logic named... Ah, they're all alike. There. Hey, I suddenly got a happy hugs Gert idea. Gert! Gert! Baby! <laughs> Frank, let go of me! I'm not Frank! I told you never to touch hey, me. Hey, hey. Oh, don't be so silly. Okay, honey, hold the fort. That's what I call it. <laughs> Maybe they aren't all alike. Where are you going, Frank? You gonna make a getaway? Baby, if you've got the right inspiration, I'm going straight. <laughs> to the middle of this hall. Sorry, it's continued. To the middle of this whole jamboree. <laughs> You remember me, Mr. Core Russian person? <laughs> That's me. I'm Caldwell of the Logics Company. Logics Company? I wish the Logics Company was at the bottom of ocean. Well, I don't blame you. Now, where's your logic, if I may be so bold as to inquire? It's in my pants. I mean, I'm not so. <laughs> It's in here. I'd smash it a million pieces if I wasn't afraid of what Freddy would do to me. Just, just get out of the way, will ya? I got business with Joe. Boo, boo. Welcome to Macintosh. <laughs> if you want to do something and don't know how, ask your logic. Oh, so we're back to that routine, huh? Well, I want to do something, all right. Tell me, Joe, if that really is your name, can a logic be modified to achieve correlations for which human brains are too limited? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, that just seems very obvious. I don't even know why you would ask that. It's, you know, yeah, you know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and just how great will the modifications be? Now, microscopically slight. Changes in dimension not detectable even by precision gauges. They can only come about through extremely improbable accidents, a sign that only happen in ridiculous radio plays. <laughs> Otherwise known as super logic, maybe? And uh, what would this super logic then be able to do? Uh, leap tall buildings, stop bullets with its bare hands, uh, represent truth, justice, uh, another kind of, I don't know, I'm just like, uh, boy, when I know nothing. I don't know, I, uh, you got me, uh, uh, oh, oh, the, would there ever be an accident, Joe? Uh, I, well, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I, I spoke where I'm on the wrong page. Ah, 
Oh, no, I'm on the wrong page. I, no, I'm just, oh, yeah. And you could set up entire new combinations of electric relays, which would bypass normal sensor blocks, thereby enabling it to perform a... Very valuable new services, if you know what I mean. Uh, including the giving of helpful advice on any human problems. I know you've got a couple yourself, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, ha. Mm. Has this accident ever happened, Joe? Or did you clean it up? There was this one time at a convention in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> she was dressed as Sailor Mercury. I never got her name. I don't know. Come on, come on. It has happened. Only once. In the case of a logic now owned by the Russian Gayevich family of 119 East 7th Street. A logic named Joe. Dun dun dun. <laughs> That's a euphemism. Thanks, Joe. That's all I wanted to know. Hey, what's all this about? I'm taking this logic away, Mr. Russian guy. I'll bring you a new one. Our troubles are all over. So that's what you call it. Yeah, I guess. Uh oh. Correction, our troubles are just beginning. You kissed your mother with that mouth, this little son of My real mom! No! Oh, I hate you. Now, Freddy, put down that blowgun. Oh, shut up! Hey, you! I said get away from that logic! Now, now, you little shit. I said I'm gonna bring you a nice new one, see? It's a police siren. I thought it was a cat. Yeah. Slowly. Oh no, it's the dwarf. <laughs> Ready? Don't you have some threatening? What? Oh. I want that one. Threatening. What I got in this pea sugar ain't beans. Should I show it to you again? Mr. Cobble, Mr. Cobble, it's the police! Yeah? Don't I do good impression of police showing up? <laughs> Where are they be? <laughs> they're outside! Oh no, it's a good place for them. Yeah, they're here for me and Freddy. Nuts! What do they want you for? You ain't smart enough to do nothing. <laughs> oh no? <laughs> Say, there's plenty I can tell you, see? It just start acting like a oh, wounding exit. Click with my knife? Yeah, it's here. Just, That's you know, why my knife. Like a turret. <laughs> <laughs> There's the cops, kid. It's you and me against them, without your piece. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it if you're so smart? Uh, now look, we may have to find our way out, see? So let me see that blowgun. What? I know a way to hop it up so the cops won't have a chance. Come on, come on, give it to me. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right, here. Slaps kid across the face. I deep slap you. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, Mr. Cobra, you are a great man. He just beat me. I know, he's a great man. Yeah, things were different in the 70s. Out of the wall. Daisy. <laughs> uh, come right in, Sergeant. Dwarf person. Well, some giant man just hit me in the face, and he tried to steal my blue gun, and he wouldn't let me cut him with a knife. Well, I'm a good actor. Careful, man. Careful. Careful. Oh, that must be the kid. Oh, God. 
He got this slide right here. Good because if it lasted for four hours, you have to see. <laughs> oh well, there'll be no more complaints, officer. I guess I can go on where Mr. Caldwell left off. What? Oh, 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 oh. You do keep the pack down with my tongue. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh, you're wanted. This time you get to answer some questions and we'll keep you in the cool until you do. <laughs> What? In jail? Oh, okay. Let's go. Uh, wait a minute. You act like you wanted to go to jail. Again. Yeah, I do. I got a feeling it'll be safer there. Oh, how wrong you are. <laughs> what do you mean? Hold on. Sure. Just get myself. Just put me away until a certain party leaves town and I'll confess to anything. Thanks, officer. You may be saving my life. Now, if you'll just help me carry this logic out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, big fella. You can't take that in the wagon. I can't? Why not? No room. We've already got a dame in there who's raising the roof. A dame? Yeah. A <laughs> little southern biscuit. She was trying to buy a gun without a permit. She keeps screaming she's going to miss her date with... Ducky. <laughs> Next week, Dimension X joins the big parade of exciting half-hour presentations at a brand new time on Friday, Friday, Friday evenings at a different hour, hour, hour. In the Eastern Time Zone, you'll hear it at 9 o'clock Fridays. D10, Daylight Saving Times, and other time zones. Please consult your doctor. I mean, local newspaper if you're listening to learn for a new time. That's when Dimension X, 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 X. We'll bring you one of the strangest stories ever told. Ray Bradbury's Mars is Heaven. Well then, we survived. Just in time, too. Wait, I missed the half part. Can we start this over again? Let's start over, and I'm going to recast everybody. Girls as guys, guys as girls. What about you? You're going to be a ten-year-old brat who has popsicles and has a pea shooter. And KG is going to play the creepiest bartender I've ever heard. With a, with a poop fetish, yeah. <laughs> you didn't miss too much to now, don't worry. All right. Uh, say, uh, yes, Talison and Patrick have to run to a panel. So, let's say goodbye. give props to uh, a, a very good friend of mine who actually found this script that we performed today. Sarah! Now we know what it is. <laughs> you actually found like four or five scripts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're actors. They like to be told what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but... Thank you for doing the research, because there are so many of these scripts, and honestly, it was quite daunting. And Sarah actually volunteered. It's like, I'll find a script, and she did. So yeah, she's got plenty, so I'm set for a while. So thank you, Sarah. Very cool. Um, the panel ends in like five minutes, and we have like a half hour buffer before the next event. Do, does anyone want to take Q&A, or do you want to just call it? Q&A? Anybody Q&A? Questions? Answers? If you want to sit down, if you want. Anybody want to ask something? 
Raise your hand. Okay. Raise your hand. Raise your hand to me for sure. Really? No questions? Come on, guys. I know better, man. All right, back there. What was the craziest radio play you ever done? Not kind of this one. The craziest one? I don't know. This one, this may take the cake. You've only done like two or three of these, right? No, I did. I did uh, we did Flash Gordon a few years ago. And we actually did Mars is Heaven, the one that was previewed. Was that the one where Marianne was a racist? I think so. Yeah. It was pretty Shut up, Kiji Tang. I don't like you. <laughs> and usually she rubbed him wrong time, so. <laughs> oh my. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not fair that we can't that we can't use this one, because this one was kinda out there. And there was, well, there, was poop, there was poop and pedophilia. What else? You can't go wrong, right? With that, you know? We've got a pretty uh, dedicated, passionate group up here that well, I, I know are, are going to always bring it, you know? I can give them the most mundane thing and they're going to turn it into gold, as you see, so. Or poop. Or poop. <laughs> yeah, right. pieces. That poop. Yes. So yeah, and your bar. Oh, we should probably get off the poop now. The pooper. Yay. Questions, answers, comments. You should probably go to the hospital. Probably should. Or yeah. Okay. Memorable roles. And popsicle Pete? Talking about popsicles in their mouth? Is that another one? Oh, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 Yeah, With, with you, Kyle, so I don't really have a memorable one, but I thought this one was pretty fun. It was a lot more than this one, but... Yeah, I think, I think poop fetish bartenders. I'm putting that on my resume, if you don't know. Yeah, do you want some more? Actually, I think that you eat giraffes every other line, I believe. Wait, were we supposed to use aardvarks this time? Giraffe! I, I don't know. <laughs> Craziness. Something to share? John Allen on the end here. A newbie up on stage with us. Yes, uh, this was my uh, my first time doing Kyle Laker's Anime Radio Theater. Uh, I would like to announce that I am uh, retiring from acting and will be going back to college. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, degrees in education. Woo! America has a question. Sure. Um, hug, hugs are free, as long as they're not glomps. And uh, meanwhile, while we get the love, this gentleman here. Craziest panels? Laura will handle this. Okay. Um, you should ask that question to Marianna and KJ. Someone 
someone like ask if they could make out or something. And so the, we were like, no, no, this is like Yowie, you need to have like a good backstory. Right, there was role playing. So. so I gave him a character. He was basically what? You remember I was a construction worker, so, right? Yeah, so he was a construction worker and Martin was a black construction or a black writer. writer and this is how job. this is how Martin role plays as a black guy. First thing out of his mouth, he walks up to KG. So punky. <laughs> it was just 20 minutes of that yeah. pretty much. And at the end of the panel he comes up to me, he's like, Marianne, I'm quite intoxicated right now. <laughs> <laughs> For me, craziest panel, uh, probably I was doing a voiceover panel at Comic Con International in 2004. And uh, right after we got, uh, it was me and through the people, and right after we got the introductions done, there was like a power out, so all the lights went out for some reason. It's like, you fell for a trap, grab the money and run! <laughs> so that was pretty fun. By the way, I know people are like, maybe they gotta get to other stuff, but if I made you a quick plug on your way out of producing a show, and feel free to grab a flyer. I should have said not to answer that. She thinks I look like a back wheel. Plus panels are always fun. The people that tell you like the, the nasty and the con stories. Woo! No. <laughs> yeah, this guy has a whole panel dedicated to that. <laughs> I went, I went to sign autographs and there's nobody there. Okay. okay. That's a nice humbling experience. We love you! They are. No, I did have a memorable panel at AX last year. I was a guest of honor and I actually felt like Vic Mignogna for a second. Because like everyone was like, Wah! I felt like I was hosting a talk show. Jerry Springer. And yes, I don't know, yeah. She said she would be here this weekend, but I don't know if she's actually in here. Where's Jill B. Yoko? She's not really Jill. Jill's actually Yoko? She's actually, uh... I can't go back to Is that hot Yoko? Uh, but yeah, she comes up to the Q&A on the mic and goes, Hey, what's your room number? And except she wasn't kidding. So there's a lot of awkward laughter. And like, wow, oh, she's serious, isn't she? And then I, I leave the panel, and then she finds me afterwards, and everyone's like getting autographs and stuff. She comes up, I'm serious, what's your room number? It's like, I don't know you from a hole in the wall. What? Dude, how old just, are you? Just check her ID. That's all you need to how, do. How, I, I know. How was Spike's it? advice would be to check the ID. And I understand, I understand. But what went through my head was, you want some basic instinct? <laughs> Sure, you take Sharon Stone, but she just ice pick you to death! She's so nice about it though. She's the nicest teacher on TV. She's like, I think you're in the language competition, you're telling yourself, and you've wasted your parents' money. I'm sorry. Sharon Stone? What? I would not want Sharon Stone if she sounded like that. What the hell are you talking about? John Allen and Tequila. Bad idea. Very true. Very true. We'll see. Uh, uh, yes. Other questions? Other answers? <laughs> He's enjoying it from the yes, audience. Yes, you with the face. Beauty and the Beast. Jeez, um, I actually have a little story about that you remind me. Um, there was a cosplayer earlier, I don't know if she's here right now. No, Mulan chick. Actually, she was a cosplayer for Milan and she was so cute. She had a little mushu popping out of her cleavage. It was really cute. Uh, and she came, yeah, cleavage, right? And she came up to me. She was like, oh, can you sign this please? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And then I was like, man, I really want to go home and watch Milan now. <laughs> That's a little mini story. I don't know what my favorite Disney movie is, man. That's tough. Well, at the moment, no, no. But I did just see Tangled. I thought it was really good. I liked it. So. 
um, I don't know. My answer is I don't know. What's your favorite? Julie, you don't have anything to say about this? What? Uh, no. Well, you know how um, they tell you if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. You don't have any favorite Disney movies? Uh, uh, Disney movies? Yeah. Uh, oh, I thought we were talking about Disney. Uh, my favorite Disney movie? Sleeping Beauty, by far. I love Sleeping Beauty. Nobody? It, I love it. Has nobody seen Sleeping Beauty? Come on, there's gotta be a little more love for that movie. Best songs ever. I don't care. Yeah, very, oh, now you know it. Um, there, there's a lot of good ones. I think for me, uh, it, I don't know that necessarily is technically my favorite, but one that I can sit down and watch and not really get tired of is uh, Hercules. Because James Woods freaking made that oh movie. My oh my god. We had James Woods. <laughs> Probably the Lion King or Mark's Life and Pixar Towers. Hunch oh, Hunchback, yeah. I keep forgetting that's a Disney movie. Definitely Hunchback. It's got hell in it. That doesn't happen in Disney movies. Yeah. That's what Disney's missing all the time. Yeah. Wars. Well, it's, it's the story of Rapunzel and Ardor. <laughs> But wasn't it about like repressed homosexuality? Repressed homosexuality? Yeah, like Frollo. He was like a repressed homosexual, wasn't no, he? What? Was oh. Esmeralda. Oh. You wanna hit that? He spent like half the movie being like, Lord, deliver me, save me, I'm Tony J. I'm fucking awesome. Is there a non whore related question? <laughs> uh, Disney wise, I'm gonna have to go with old school Fantasia. The live action of uh, Escape from Witch Mountain. Back in the day, I had the hots for that girl back then. <laughs> Still kind of do. Testing, one, two, three, good time. Um, fun. <laughs> Midnight Run, I think, was a touchstone movie with Robert De Niro and Charles Cogan. It was a very funny movie. That was a touchstone. Alright. Um, apparently, I'm being obliged to answer why I don't really matter. Um, you matter to what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I don't really associate Pixar with Disney because every time I see a Pixar movie and that animated castle comes up in the CG, I'm like, <laughs> get out of here, Disney, this is Pixar's great bitches. But um, animated, Alice in Wonderland. I mean, seriously, Jack, a fucking silly. Well, that's different. And uh, did they do George of the Jungle, the live action? I love that, it was hilarious. I thought it was awesome. Uh, animated, I can't name just one. I mean, Disney is fused with Pixar, and I know Pixar kind of was its own entity, even though they're kind of owned by Disney now. But I would throw out the Toy Story trilogy, because I think it's like perfection. They're all so freaking awesome. Uh, I love Old School Fantasia as well. Certain segments of it, like Nine on Bald Mountain, or Chernobog, the big team, and it's like, oh my god, I can't believe this is 1940. And then the, 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 the Sprite of Spring, the Rite of Spring, the last segment of Fantasia 2000. There's some other great segments in there. And the whales floating above the sky and everything. It's like, ah, oh, it's epic! Alice in Wonderland, because that's hand-drawn! I can't pick one. Right now, I'm totally biased because I'm in Tron mode, so I love Tron. I just, you know, Say what you will about the plot and CG Jeff Bridges, I don't care. It's a friggin' movie, and it entertained me. Yeah. Out of the, sea. Yeah. the all of what they said, I, but I will 
will have to admit that the funniest thing is my family oddly likes Inspector Gadget, that live action way of Matthew Broderick. Why? Because there was the Godzilla joke, and guess who was being chased down by it? Ah, hey. My family thought it was hilarious. I mean, he was chased by a giant mechanical Matthew Broderick, I don't know. In Japan, they think it's funny. Alice in Wonderland was a trip. Oh, yeah. No, I'm agreeing with everything, right? That you guys are saying. Who was that? Ed Asner. I loved that movie. That was probably Pixar or something, right? Yeah, that was one of my favorite animated movies. I just thought, it really, I, I remember crying during it. It was great. Does um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit count as animated? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 He's like, okay, well, what if we have like this one uh, chick and like these uh, these seven midgets kidnap her, and, and one of them one of them is like a surly jerk, one of them has narcolepsy, you know, one of them is a, is a closet homo, and, and the only way and the chick passes out, and the only way they can save her is to for some guy to just randomly walk up and make out with her. He's like, that's terrible, that's disgusting. We can never do that in our company. Really? Because I just gave you the premise to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. You're losing the belt next week. <laughs> I was actually once asked what, what was my favorite... You okay? <laughs> I was actually once asked what was my uh, favorite Disney show, TV show. Uh, one of my favorite Disney TV shows is Gargoyles. Hi! I love Gargoyles. Love it. And I liked... Um, uh, Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, and Tailspin. Those are my three topics. Favorite TV shows? How about favorite Disney TV shows? Darkwing Duck! Gummy Bears. Yeah. Oh, Wuzzles! Does anybody remember Wuzzles? Like weird little animals. Yes, actually, yeah. I do remember the wuzzles. Wuzzles, and, and they came out with a paintbrush, and they would like paint the entire opening. Yeah, no, yeah. See, you remember the wuzzles? It, it was kind of. I kept confusing them with the noozles. Remember the noozles, like the koalas that like rub their noses. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go back to when I was a child, it was the Charlie the Cougar show, and this is Charlie the Cougar. <laughs> Charlie the Cougar. The Lonesome Cougar. The Lonesome Rex Cougar. Allen. <laughs> He's met a new friend. That's a skunk. Watch out, Charlie. <laughs> yes, sir. We know. Johnny West. I'd say, wasn't that HR Puffin stuff? Was that a Sid Marty? That was Sid Marty. Was it different? Yeah. It wasn't part of that? Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to go with no on that one. Uh... Yeah, Flintstones! Yeah. Were the Jetsons, right? The Jetsons? I totally loved Quick Draw McGraw. That was Hanna Barbera, right? Yeah. Quick Draw McGraw. I loved it. I was like a Looney Tune snob. I was spoiled by Looney Tunes, so when I started seeing yeah. Hanna-Barbera cartoons with laugh tracks, and like, yeah. Yeah. I never got into it. And the reuse over and over, the, the, the backgrounds, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hanna-Barbera, Scooby-Doo. 
Here, yeah. Scooby Doo. Done. I'm popping in Scooby Doo. Woo! A pup named Scooby Doo. It was so cute. It's kind of like Muppet Babies. That's Scooby Doo. Bye, Christina. Bye, Christina. Bye, Christina. Bye, I tend to like offbeat cartoons like Invader Zim. <laughs> I felt, I, I just, I wasn't pretty and fair and long and very stuff, even as a kid sometimes, especially, you know, having a short attention to and uh, sometimes I put me to sleep. So I'll use my turn to just say that I love Lord's Edge and love my voice. That was awesome. <laughs> Uh, recently I got to play a flying yellow chicken, so it brought me uh, into 
Warner Brothers kind of domain, so I'd like to play some wacky, wacky, wacky characters that are more old school. Sorry, I just remembered how I got shot by a bear. <laughs> um, shoot, uh, this, this is going back a bit, um, but one that I really would have liked because it, uh, it's the the series that kind of got me into the genre. Uh, I really would have liked to have been Broly in Dragon Ball Z, just because you know, as a as a young man who grew up with a lot of anger. <laughs> it might as well have put that to good use and then done a therapeutic role with lots and lots of screaming. So, <laughs> wasn't he just angry because Goku made him cry? Well, I didn't say he had a good reason. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, I could have used, you know, sometimes as actors we pray for roles where we can transfer, you know, the, the stuff that we want to get out of us on that. And that would have been a neat canvas to, to paint with. Um, uh, but beyond, you know, since that's you know well and done, thanks. Babe. Um, I would, uh, uh, I'd love to get killed on Metal Apocalypse. Yeah. Really, really any of the adult, quirky adult swim cartoons, working with like Dana Snyder would be the Yes. He's Master Shake. <laughs> and Granny on Swim Days. Um, I'm on the short list at Disney to be one of the replacement voices for Kermit the Frog. And so I... Yeah. That is my goal, Brain. Is to be. Worldwide studios looking for frogs wishing to become rich and famous. Can I have an answer? Mostly everything, I will have to admit, I agree with that one, the animation one's always involved. I do admit I'm kind of done for Doctor Who someday. Uh, and still not ginger, and something's going wrong with the regeneration. I'm not sure what. <laughs> All right, I said that, and so... Um, All right, that's it. Go home. Thanks for having us. Still have a few Thank you. Love you. Thank you. One second left. Everybody's trying to get into the biz. A reminder: the closing ceremonies is in this room. Sorry. Bye. Woot.